Yeah, see, you even got the killing wrong. You, you, you're trying to make out I just went out and blatantly killed somebody. No, nobody went to hell. Enjoyment turned to disaster. That's what happened on all of it, or most of it anyway. Frederick West, also known as Fred West, was born in the small town of Much Markle in Herefordshire. He was the second of six children of Walter Stephen West and Daisy Hannah Hill. By Fred's own account, sexual abuse of various kinds were common in the household. Fred claimed his father had sexual relationships with his daughters and taught him to have sex with animals. It was also suspected that Fred's mother started sexually abusing him when he was 12, although he has never admitted to it and it has never been confirmed like the stories about his father also. Neither did Fred claim that he also engaged in incest and even got one of his sisters pregnant. Fred and his mother were very close when he was physically punished for doing badly in school, but he showed some talent in woodwork and artwork. His mother, who was obese and often dressed unattractively, often went to his school in person to shout at teachers for doing so. Fred left school at the age of 15, even though he was almost illiterate to get a job as a farmhand. When he was 16, his looks improved and he became more attractive to girls. At the age of 17, he was in a motorcycle accident that put him in a coma for a week, which led him to having a metal plate operated into his head and breaking one of his legs so badly it was permanently shorter than the other. After the accident though, he acquired a bad temper and often had violent bursts of anger. But two years after the accident, Fred hurt his head again when he stuck his hands up a girl's skirt and she pushed him down a fire escape. When he was 19, he was convicted of molesting a 13-year-old girl, although he didn't serve any jail time because his doctor said he suffered from epileptic fits. He was then sent to live with his sister and was practically disowned by the rest of his family. Fred got a job in construction, but was fired from stealing from his workplace. When Fred was 21, his family let him back into their lives and he moved back to Much Markle where he had resumed a romantic relationship with an ex-girlfriend, Catherine Costello, who had been a petty theft when they first dated and moved on to prostitution. Although Catherine was already pregnant with the child of an Asian man, they then married and kept the child. Fred and Catherine wrote to her parents and said the baby had died in childbirth and that her child was a girl. They married in November, only two months after getting back together and moved to Scotland together. Fred demanded sex from Catherine daily and wasn't too interested in regular sex. The couple had a child of their own in July of 1964, a daughter named Anne Marie. During their rocky marriage, Fred worked as an ice cream truck driver, a job that gave him plenty of access to available young women. Their life in Scotland came to an end when Fred accidentally ran over a four-year-old boy with his truck, although the accident wasn't his fault. So Fred moved with his family, as well as Isa McNeil, who took care of their children, and Anna McFaul, a friend of Costello's. At Gloucestershire, Fred got a new job at a slaughterhouse when Costello's marriage finally collapsed. Costello went back to Scotland alone, but came back in July of 1966 because she missed her daughter, only to discover that Fred had started a relationship with McFaul. In 1967, McFaul became pregnant with Fred's child and tried to get him to divorce Costello. In response, he killed and dismembered and buried her. Costello finally left Fred a few months later, leaving their child with him. Fred is suspected to have killed again in January of 1968 when 15 year old Mary Baston disappeared from a bus stop. After the death of his mother in February, Fred started committing a lot of thefts and changed jobs a lot. It was during a spell as a bakery truck driver that he met his future wife and accomplice, Rosemary Letts. Rosemary Letts was born in Devon, England in 1953. Her household was troubled and abusive. Her father, Bill Letts, was a schizophrenic who constantly disciplined her and her siblings and her mother, Daisy. While Daisy had been pregnant with Rosemary, she'd receive electroconvulsive therapy as treatment for a severe depression. When growing up, Rosemary was sexually abused by her father because she wasn't very bright and a bit overweight. She was often teased and responded by attacking her bullies aggressively. When she was a teenager, she became more sexually active and was even caught getting into bed with one of her younger brothers and sexually touching him. Because her figure and her father's rules prevented her from dating boys her own age. She pursued relationships with older men where she lived, but one of them took advantage of her and raped her. When Rosemary was 15, her mother finally had enough of her husband's abuse. She then took Rosemary and moved in with one of her adult daughters and her husband. Rosemary started spending even more time with male companions. But later that same year, Rosemary surprisingly moved back in with her father. Not long afterwards, 
she met Fred West, who was 12 years older than her. In spite of the way he had treated her, Rosemary's father strongly objected to her seeing Fred and even went to the house where he'd lived with his two daughters and threatened him. While Fred did several periods of time in jail for thefts and also failures to pay his fines for previous offences, Rosemary became pregnant with his child, a girl named Heather. She also took care of his children. Because of her temper problems and her resentment about caring for children who weren't hers, she often treated her stepdaughters badly. In the summer of 1971, Rosemary lost her head completely and killed Charmaine. After severing the body's fingers and toes, Fred buried it under their kitchen floor. In August of 1971, Costello disappeared when she came looking for Charmaine. Her body was found to have its fingers and toes cut off when it was discovered, and Fred was suspected to have been the killer. Although Fred and Rosemary married on January the 29th, 1972, Fred encouraged Rosemary to have sex with other men, both for money and for fun, and often watched her through a peephole. He also took erotic photos of her, and then posted them in Swinger magazines as ads for prostitution. In June of 1972, they had another daughter together, Mae West. In order to make room for their expanding family and Rosemary's business, they moved to 25 Cromwell Street, where they carried out their rapes and murders. Rosemary continued working as a prostitute from their home, in a room fitted with peepholes for Fred to use, and a red light outside that would be lit to tell the children not to enter. Over the following years, she gave birth to seven more children, of which three were fathered by Fred. Another may have been conceived by Rosemary and her own father, who kept engaging incest with her after she gave birth to a fourth child. But the other three, who were of mixed race, were all fathered by her clients. On October 1972, Fred and Rosemary hired a young woman named Caroline Owens to work for them as a nanny for their children. They kept making sexual advances on her, but she declined every time. One night in December, after they both unsuccessfully tried to seduce her, she tried to leave but was held captive overnight. But when Fred threatened to let some of his friends have her, and that he would then kill her, she ended up accepting Fred's offer. The next day, she was released. Although she did press charges, Fred was able to convince the court that the acts she was forced into had been consensual. So Fred and Rosemary were instead only fined £50 for indecent assault. Over the next six years, they killed at least eight young women who made their way to 25 Cromwell Street as lodgers or employees together. The first was Linda Goff, who was a seamstress the West knew personally. Next was Carol Ann Cooper, who disappeared while walking home from the cinema. In December, Lucy Partington disappeared from a bus stop whilst on her way home after Christmas. She was murdered by Fred and Rosemary, who abducted her, held her captive for a week over New Year, raped and tortured her, then killed her. On January the 3rd, Fred was treated for laceration, which is believed to have been inflicted when he dismembered Lucy. From 1974 to 1979, five more women were also killed. Therese Siegenthaler, Shirley Hubbard, Juanita Marion Mott, Shirley Ann Robertson, and Alison Chambers met the same fate. It's unknown if the West killed more over the following years. If they did, which is not improbable, the bodies weren't buried on their property. Some of the girls are known to have been abducted, raped, and then released. But while committing the murders, Fred also sexually abused Anne-Marie West, his daughter from his relationship with Catherine Costello. She eventually became pregnant, but the pregnancy had to be terminated because it was an ectopic pregnancy. When she left home, he started abusing Heather West, who was conceived by Rosemary and possibly her own father, and one of his own daughters, Mae West. Fred disposed of the victims by burying them under the garage or under the house or in the garden. To cover up the frequent burials, he pretended to be doing regular home improvements. In order to afford the supplies needed, he frequently stole and fenced the loot. Even though he was often brought to the police's attention for this reason, his killings went unnoticed. The couple came close to being exposed in 1986, when Heather told her friends about the abuse she suffered. In June of the next year, Fred and Rosemary strangled her to death to silence her. She was then dismembered and buried in the garden. The West were finally exposed in May 1992, when Fred videotaped himself raping one of his daughters. When she told her friends, one of them reported the West to the police. The investigating officer, Hazel Savage, had heard of Fred when he was in a relationship with Catherine Costello. When another girl raped by Fred came forward, the police obtained a search warrant. In August, they searched the house for evidence of child abuse. Fred was arrested for rape and sodomy for a minor, and Rose was arrested as an accomplice. While they were being processed, the younger children were placed in the care of the government. While Fred was in custody, Rosemary became depressed and even attempted suicide, but was saved by one of her sons. Unfortunately, 
the rape cases fell apart when the victims backed out. Meanwhile, Savage became increasingly suspicious of the West's past, the disappearance of Heather, and the results of the interviews of the West children, especially that they'd been threatened by Fred, and that they would be buried under the patio like Heather. She was able to obtain another search warrant to have the property dug up. The task was simplified when Fred confessed to Heather's murder in custody. When human bones started cropping up, Fred confessed to having committed the murders alone in order to protect Rosemary. However, he would not admit to raping any of his victims, saying that they wanted to have sex with him. But soon enough, the bodies of Anne McFall and Charmaine West turned up as well. Seeking to protect herself, Rose cut off all contact with her husband. On December the 13th, 1994, he was charged with a total of 12 murders. On New Year's Day, he hanged himself in his cell in Winston Green Prison with a knotted bedsheet. His body was cremated and his funeral unattended except for his five children. Rose was also put on trial in the end, first for rape, but then for murder as well. She never confessed to any of the murders and the evidence against her was largely circumstantial. An important witness was Janet Leach, who was Fred's appropriate adult, who also revealed that Fred had told her that Rose had been involved in the murders and even killed Charmaine West and Shirley Robinson on her own. On November the 22nd, 1995, Rose was found guilty of 10 murders and sentenced to life in prison. She will never be released, though she still maintains her innocence. She announced in 2001 that she will not try to appeal her conviction. In 1996, 25 Cromwell Street was completely demolished and the site was turned into a pathway. The West victims were Caucasian females in their mid-teens to early 20s and sometimes related to them. The ones who weren't were usually lured into the house under the premise that they would be hired as nannies or some other job. When the victim were under Fred and Rosemary's control, they would rape and torture her in elaborate and sadistic bondage acts for days and then strangle or suffocate her and bury her on the property. Fred's signature was cutting off the victim's fingers and toes and sometimes their kneecaps before burying them. Fred is also known to have committed several additional rapes whose victims are anonymous or unnamed. He also claimed to have committed more murders.